Good morning, afternoon, or evening, everyone. My name is Jeremy Walsh, and I'm the Director of Support, Training, and Documentation for BNI Connect. I'd like to welcome everybody to the webinar today. Uh, today's webinar is part of our Leadership Team series of webinars, um, where we're going to talk about the chapter website. We're going to talk about how to edit your chapter website, how to put pictures up on your chapter website, and all of the things that you can do with the chapter website. Um, usually this is a function that's reserved to either people of the leadership team, meaning the president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, and or the um, if you're designated as a chapter webmaster. Before we get started, a couple of housekeeping things. This is a live webinar, so if you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to ask those questions. I encourage you to please type your question into the question panel. I'll see those pop up on the screen and I can answer those questions as we're going through the material today. We're scheduled for about 30 minutes worth of content. It's about how long it takes to go through the chapter websites. <clears throat> that said, I am always happy to stay here until every single question has been answered. We are also recording this webinar, so if you need to refer back to it later or you need to pass it along to somebody else that might need a copy of this webinar, you're welcome to do so. You'll find it on our support site, which I'll show you a little bit later, as well as up on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash BNI Connect Global. So let's get started with today's content. Again, we're going to talk about the CMS or the content management system uh, that allows us to access and edit the chapter web pages. Now, before I do that, let me, if, in case you're not familiar with what the chapter web pages are, um, basically every single chapter around the world has a web page or a website that you can edit and you can work with. It's part of your regional website. So if you'd like to see what your regional website currently looks like, the thing to do is to click on regional website in the upper right hand corner. That will take you to your regional website. Now I happen to be a member in the Rhode Island region. So this will bring you to wherever you are a member of. And I'm here in Rhode Island, so we have BNIRI.com. And this is a fairly standard regional site. And if I go to, let's say the chapters, I go to find a chapter and I look for all the chapters. I'm in the Wakefield chapter, so I'm gonna click on BNI Wakefield. I can see all the members listed, I can have phone numbers, I can look through their profiles, things like that. And one of the buttons that I have here is Visit Chapter Website. Now this is our chapter web, web page or our chapter website. This is a fairly default standard out of the box chapter website. Uh, the only thing really non-standard about this particular website is this Facebook page uh, link right here. But it shows you how much money we've passed. It gives a brief blurb about what BNI is. It has our leadership team listed all down the left-hand side. It has who our upcoming speakers is, uh, you know, generic image here. On our Meet Our Members page, it has all the links to everybody's profile. If you click on any of the members, the members have a page on each of these sites as well. Now, one of the great things about the BNI Connect sites is that even a default site that you've never, ever touched before is providing some visibility for your chapter, and you don't even have to do anything to update most of the content. All this, the speaker rotation, as long as your secretary treasurer is entering the speakers into BNI Connect, the chapter website is automatically updated with that information. Your leadership team is going to be automatically updated as soon as they're selected in the system. All of the member profiles are automatically updated if they just log into BNI Connect and update them. So anybody that's tried to establish their own chapter website in the past, you know, it usually starts off with a bang and everybody's all happy and they, usually the, the web designer in the chapter is very gung-ho to do it, but then all of a sudden, you know, a month later, six months later, a year later, chasing down people for information and constantly having to update it, and it's usually a voluntary thing, um, it, it, it falls into disrepair rather quickly. This one pretty much, you know, all you have to worry about is content and not a lot of the administrative aspect of it. So as members join the chapter, they'll automatically be listed. As members leave the chapter, they'll automatically be removed from the site. Now again, this is a very, very basic site. Uh, let me show you a couple of examples of uh, regional sites and uh, chapter sites that have done a little bit more with it. Uh, so let's, I know one of them is the BNI Rugby chapter. 
uh, the BNI Rugby Chapter. And this is them, the BNI Warwickshire region. And this is their chapter website. So you can see that they've done uh, things a little bit differently. They, they've really gone and added a lot of graphics to their site. They've made a nice long site, plenty of links and you know, funny images and you know, infographics and videos are embedded in there. And um, registering to visit the site, quotes from members, all sorts of things on the site, another video. I mean, it's, it is a great example of the things that you can do with this page. Um, they've added a little bit of content to their chapter members page as well. So they added some graphics up at the top. They're also using the gallery feature. So this is essentially a, um, yeah, a photo gallery. So you can look at a slideshow of things that your chapter is doing. And there's also a news feed available if you're choosing to use the news feed. So that's one. Let me look at another one. There's the Golden Ideas chapter. Uh, they're in San Francisco, I believe. And here it is. We have the Golden Ideas chapter. You know, they've taken a similar approach. Uh, they've added some other graphics. They went for a two-column uh, approach here, and they put a map to their chapter and a new logo and uh, a message from their president. One thing I found interesting that they did is if I go to their chapter members page, they'll have all of the chapter members here, but they added some stuff to the header up here that says, um, if you want to view the chapter via Power Teams. Now, this required a little bit of coding on their part and some manual upkeep to this, um, but they are able to uh, you know, give a little bit more value to their to their page here in order to, uh, to show that information. All right, so now we have that, and... How do we access that? How do we get to these chapter web pages in order to make these types of updates? So the way to do that is, is actually through BNI Connect. It's all tied on the inside of BNI Connect and it's pushing those websites out. Essentially, we have our own kind of WordPress style CMS editor here in BNI Connect. Now you access that, or I should say in order to access that, you need to either um, usually be on the leadership team, either president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, or you need to be assigned as the chapter webmaster. Once you're assigned as the chapter webmaster, uh, you should see these options along the top called tools. Now, depending on your level of access, again, you may only see certain things here, but you should see a tools menu, and you should see CMS. Under there, you should see chapter websites, tools, CMS, chapter websites. Now, again, if you don't see that, don't panic. Um, all you need to do is to reach out to your regional office, so your director consultant or your regional administrator or your executive director, and they should be able to help you out and get you assigned the proper permissions. All right, so once you get there, you'll see all of the chapters that you have access to editing. Now, if you're just a member of one chapter um, and just a webmaster for one chapter, you'll probably see something similar to this, where you only see one chapter on the screen. Obviously, as a sysadmin, I saw all of them. So this is going to take you, if I click on the link here, this will take me to the BNI Burr chapter website in Antarctica. This is the one that we're going to play with today. I can see who created it, and I can click on options to go in and edit the page. All right, so this brings us into the back end of the website. <clears throat> so you'll notice that it's broken into a couple of different tabs along the top. We have pages, library, and site information. The Pages tab, the first tab here, is going to show us all of the pages of our website. So we have the Home page, the Chapter Members page, this little caret symbol, uh, or greater than symbol, uh, it is showing that these are sub-pages or subsections of the Chapter Members page. We have a Gallery page, and we have a News page. I'll get into some of these other options in a few minutes. 
down at the bottom, we'll also see that we have two links here. <clears throat> now there's two links, there's a preview link and there's a live link. Now the reason for that is that there's actually two copies of your website. There's the copy that we're showing to the world. So that's the one that everybody that clicks on your chapter website, that's what they're gonna see with whatever edits and changes you've made. Now, while you're working on it, though, while you're actually creating the site and making your changes to it, you're working on a temporary copy. You're working on a back-end temporary copy called the preview site. And that allows you to go in, make changes, go and see if they're working, and then go back and change more things or upload a new picture or put a new video in. Whatever it is that you want to do, you can make those changes without worrying about whether or not anybody that's just landing on the site is happening to see it. Now what happens is after you start making all these changes, when you're ready to make it go live, you just need to hit publish. What that will do is it'll take your preview site, what you've been working on, and overwrite the live site. And once that process is complete, which takes usually about 15 to 30 seconds, then the rest of the world will see what you're working on. All right, so I'll show you how that works in just a, a couple of seconds when we start making some changes. So let's go through these other tabs, though. Along the top, we have the library tab. The library tab is where we store all of your images. So if you want to put a picture onto your website, whether it's a photo of your chapter or whether it's a more of a standardized graphic image or a visitor name badge or something like that, you need to first upload it onto the BNI Connect servers. So it has to be on our servers so that we can then display the image to whoever's coming to the website. So in order to do that, you have to upload it from your computer and put it onto the BNI Connect servers. It's pretty easy to do. All we have to do is be on this library tab, and you see we have images, documents, and flash objects. So under images, I'm going to click upload. All right, and now I can browse my computer for whatever file I would like to put up there. So let's say I want to take this um, webinar icon. By the way, you can also choose up to three things at a time. So I can take uh, visitors and this BNI Connect thing. So I have three photos that I'm going to upload. I click Upload, and in just about a second here, they will be in my chapter library. So now I can see that these will be available images for me to use in my chapter library. You can also upload documents if you'd like to link documents for people to download. Nobody really uses Flash anymore. This is uh, you know, this CMS editor is a couple of years old now, um, so Flash is really not being used that often anymore, but it is available still. And that's it. If you want to remove something, just put a little check mark in it and click the delete. Now, you can put as many images as you want to up on the server. There's really no limit to the number of images. Uh, they are limited uh, to five megabytes per image, however. Uh, so you do need to keep them a little bit smaller, and you want to keep them a little bit smaller anyway, uh, just because, if, especially if people are browsing this um, on the go, then it will just take way too long to load if you're putting really large images up there. All right, the next tab over is the site information tab. Now, there's really not much to do on this tab except for one very important thing. So this, at the top here, you'll see it says domain name. Now, the domain name is going to be whatever your region, whatever your executive director has purchased for a domain name. So in this case, we happen to own the domain name antarcticreferrals.com. Now, your chapter page will be a page within that domain name, and by default, because these are generated websites, we're automatically uh, putting out the template for the 7,000 websites around the world, it's going to also come up with a generic name for it. And right now, this is, it, it takes a combination of the region and your chapter name and replaces any invalid characters with dashes. So it came up with the name shiver-region-bni-burr. Now, that means that if I want to tell somebody, hey, go see our chapter page, just go to antarcticreferrals.com forward slash shiver-region-bni-burr, 
that's kind of a mouthful. So you can actually rename this so that it's a little bit more friendly. To do that, I just change the chapter folder name. So I can make this the Burr. I just want this to be the AntarcticReferrals.com forward slash Burr, or maybe I want to do Burr chapter or something like that. As long as it's unique within your region, so you can be the only site uh, named that way, you can change it to pretty much whatever you want. The rest of these I would leave as they are. These control the buttons that are up on the top of the page. So I'm just going to go to the site again real quick to show you what I mean. So there's these buttons up at the top, Regional Website, BNI International, and BNI Connect. That's what BNI Connect, BNI International, and Regional Website. You want to kind of leave those the way they are. Visit Chapter. You can rename this link up here, Visit Chapter. Again, I highly steer away from uh, renaming any of these ones. Uh, that is a, you want to keep that consistent within the region. If you do want to change those, talk to your executive director first. And you can also, if you have a, for example, a Google Analytics account um, that you use for your chapter, you can put that Google Analytics account, the code for that, right into this as well. Now, if you make any changes on this page, make sure you click the Update button. The screen will flash for a couple of seconds, and it should bring us back to our home page here. Now, remember before, in order to make changes active overall, you do need to publish the site. So to make this change that I made um, regarding the new folder name active, we've got to make sure that we click Publish and that will publish our entire site. And now what you'll see is this, this link is no longer going to be active. I can just go to BNI Burr, and now we're at our live site again. All right, it's time to dive into some of these pages. So you notice that under each one of the pages, we have a couple of options. So the first thing we have is edit name. So on the main pages, we can edit the name. Now that's that's this home, chapters, and news, which corresponds to home, chapter members, and news. So if I change the name, for example, let's say I don't want it to be the home page. I click on edit name, and I want it to be something like, I don't know, about BNI or something like that. Instead of home, I want it to be about BNI Burr, and click Submit. Now, if I go back to my page here, it should now say about BNI Burr, right? If I refresh, no, it still says home, and that's because I forgot to publish it. Let me go back, and on my preview site, it should have the updated information. Right, so see up here it says about BNI Burr. It has updated that information now. And when I publish this, now I go back to the live site, and you'll see here it says about BNI Burr. So now the live site and the preview site matches. Uh, let's see, Laurie says this is a lot of great information. Will you by chance be sending out a quick check sheet to refer to? Um, I don't think I have a check sheet on this one. However, this webinar is being recorded, so I can definitely put you um, in touch with the link for this recording so that you can go back and review this information or share it with uh, other webmasters or other leadership team people anytime you'd like to. All right, awesome. So let's look at uh, meta tags. Meta tags, I'm not going to really get into that today, but meta tags, this allows you to put some uh, descriptions and keywords. This is what helps you get found in Google, Yahoo, Bing, all of those search engines. They love meta tags. That is an art form in and of itself, so talk to your SEO person or somebody that you're friendly with that does search engine optimization, and they can help you out with that. Now, I'm going to skip over edit content for just a second, and you'll notice that a couple of these pages, mainly the gallery page and the news page, have a show and hide button. So for example, if I go back to our website here, we have about chapter members and news. 
about chapter members and news. So news is currently showing. If I want to, I can hide that, especially if you're not using the news page right now. I can hide that. And if I refresh my uh, preview page here, we should see that news page has now disappeared. Similarly, we have a special page called the gallery page. If you remember from the beginning of the webinar, that's where you can put a photo gallery up of things that your chapter might be doing. That page is hidden by default because it makes no sense to show a blank photo album. If I click on show, am I sure I want to show it? Yes. And if I go back to my preview site here, I should now have a gallery page. Again, it's going to be empty by default. But the gallery page is where you can go in and start uploading photos of your chapter. Um, basically, it's a storybook for your chapter. Um, now, once I enable that page, you'll notice a new tab came on the top. This gallery is very similar to the library, except that it allows you to create photo albums. So I can create photo albums up here. and then upload photos into that photo album. I can click on Manage Photos, and now the very similar thing, I can, to the, um, to the library, I click on Select Photo, I can find a photo that I'd like to upload, and now I have this photo in my library, and if I go back to my preview site, here's my album now. And it has my photo in the album. All right, let's go back to the pages. And the, really the, the, the meat and potatoes of this is that you're going to be editing the content of the pages. So we, we can edit the content of pretty much any of the pages or subpages to certain degrees. Uh, so let me go to the main page, which is your, where you'll probably spend most of your time, and click Edit Content under the About BNI Burr page. Now notice what just happened. This just popped up in a window, in a new window. If for some reason you click this button, or this link here for edit content and nothing happens, make sure you turn off your pop-up blocker. That will allow the new page to open up. All right, what you see here is pretty much your chapter web page. So this is in editing format. You know, this is largely a, what we call a WYSIWYG editor. What you see is what you get. So you can jump in and start basically typing as if you were typing in a Word document. And for the most part, these controls work that same way. Now you'll notice we can really only edit this center portion of this particular site. The reason for that is because all of those other conveniences that I mentioned before, for example, the fact that your leadership team is automatically populated and your speaker rotation is automatically populated, that is all happening over in this column over here that's pulled automatically from the inside of BNI Connect. Your speakers are pulled automatically from BNI Connect and inserted in the bottom of this page. So really the place that we're going to be uh, making the edits is within this box where all these editing tools are. Now, making the edits are, again, pretty straightforward. Uh, if you've ever worked on a Word document, you can control most of the content within your chapter website. You can highlight things and make typing changes. You can uh, do all those you know, bold and italic and underline and strike through. You can make uh, bulleted and numbered lists if you want to. One, two, three. Um, and bullet lists. You can do uh, font changes, and let's say I want this, uh, our chapter past money to be bold, I want that to be bigger, so I want that to be a 24-point font, I'd like that uh, chapter past money to be in green, so I can have a nice uh, green background or color to that one with a, uh, let's see, a red background, so make that really loud on there. 
Now, one thing you'll notice here is that we do have pound, pound, TYFCB. That is a special variable on this page. It's the only one that exists. Um, it is a special variable that goes into the system and takes your last completed 12 months. So it's a rolling completed 12 months of thank you for closed business. So this is taking February 1st, 2015 through January 31st, 2016. That is the number it will display on March 1st, it will then take the previous completed 12 months rolling again and update your chapter website with that. Um, again, all the rest of these things are pretty much the same as what you'd find in Word and Excel and all those types of things. Uh, a couple of minor differences and things to call your attention to. If you want to put a picture on your site, again, you have to have uploaded it into your library first. But once you have it loaded in your library, click this picture button here. Uh, looks like a little picture of mountains. This will open up the picture editor. Click on browse server to go look on BNI Connect servers and find the image that you want to. By default, it is going to have some stock imagery in there. So it'll have some things that you know BNI has uploaded. But here's that visitor parking spot that I had uh, uploaded earlier. Now that is a pretty large picture. I probably don't want it to be that big. I can change the height and width of it. Let's say I only want it to be about 200 pixels wide. And I click OK and now I have this visitors picture here. Uh, another important uh, function is if you need to hyperlink something, you need, uh, let's say that I have something here for, you know, check out the BNI HQ site. And I want BNI HQ to be a hyperlink that brings them to the BNI.com site. I could click this link button over here and link that to www.bni.com. Now, oh, I guess I forgot to highlight that. Oops, sorry about that. I highlight the text, www.bni.com. And now that is hyperlinked to BNIHQ.com. Now, by the way, if you are a web designer, an actual web designer by trade, which I am not, I know enough to be dangerous, but I am not a web designer. If you are comfortable, you can also go into the source code up here in the upper left-hand corner and make, make adjustments as necessary. Now, to do certain things on the page, you will have to go into the source code. Um, for example, if you'd like to embed a video. Uh, you will have to go into the source code to do that. Let me show you how to do that real quick. That's a very common question we get asked all the time. How do I embed a video? It's actually really, really easy to do. So the first thing to do is you do have to go and get the video. So let's move this screen out of the way. And I'm going to go to I'm going to go to youtube.com forward slash BNI Connect Global. This is where we store all of our BNI Connect videos. So today's video will be up here on youtube.com forward slash BNI Connect Global. As a matter of fact, on the January webinar series here, let's take a look and grab the uh, chapter web pages from last month. I'm going to click on that video. Now, to embed this into the website, what we need to do is click on the share button, and then what we want is this embed code. So not this link, we want the embed code. Now, if I want to change the size, if 560 by 315 is too big, I can click on show more and do a custom size. Let's say I only want it to be 400 pixels. And it automatically changes the source code for me. I just need to copy this. And what I need to do is paste it back in here. Here's a little trick for you. I always find it hard to look at the source code and figure out where I want to put this. So one thing you can do is to, like, what I'll do is I'll do XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
But again, the live site hasn't been published yet, so I do need to go back and publish my regional, my chapter site here. I've now published my site. I should be able to go back to the live site. And yes, now my gorgeous, wonderful, creative chapter site has now been put in place. And that, my friends, is the basics of the chapter webmaster position and how to go in and edit your chapter website. Uh, what I'd like to do now, we are at the bottom of the hour, so there, if you do need to take off right away and get on to your next job, your next webinar, your next appointment, next phone call, um, I'd like to just thank you for being here. I do want to open it up for any questions that you have. Questions, I'd be happy to answer those questions now, and I'm, I'm glad to stay here until every single question has been answered. While you're typing in those questions, just a reminder, today's webinar is being recorded. It will be made available on that YouTube site, uh, site that I showed you a few minutes ago. It will also be made available on the support site. To get to the support site where you'll find all of our documentation, uh, click on this question mark in the upper right-hand corner. This question mark right here. That will take you over to the support site. You'll see our list of upcoming webinars. This month's uh, webinars are almost over. We have one more webinar tomorrow for online renewals. And then we'll start the whole series over in March. A good referral for me. Please let other members know about these webinars. I'd love to see uh, more members on the webinars. And then if you scroll down, you'll see the rest of our documentation and manuals and reports and um, all the different things that we've documented over the years. And finally, I would love it if you gave us a like on Facebook, facebook.com. Oops, that's my personal account, BNI Connect Global, facebook.com forward slash BNI Connect Global. Uh, we do webinar announcements and tips and tricks and update announcements, all sorts of things up here on our Facebook channel as well. So please do uh, give us a like. I'd love it. All right, any questions? Uh, Donna asks, can I upload a video from my local computer versus YouTube? Uh, BNI Connect cannot host your video for you. Uh, so you would first need to upload it to some type of a video sharing site. You know, to make a very long story short, we just don't have the bandwidth for, you know, hosting thousands and thousands and thousands of uh, videos, nor the storage space. There's plenty of free programs uh, that you know, YouTube, you can create a free account. Even my account there for BNI Connect that has hundreds and hundreds of videos, uh, gigabytes and gigabytes of videos up there. Um, you know, they it's it's free. It's a free account. Um, so it's very easy to create an account on YouTube or Vimeo or any of those places. Um, that would be my recommendation. Plus, with that, um, especially with YouTube, you get tons of analytics. So you get who's clicking on it, how many clicks, how many views, where they're clicking from, all sorts of things uh, by taking advantage of those existing tools. Does that answer your question, Donna? All right, Jack. Jack says, can we add pages to the web? site. Um, unfortunately, no. Uh, at this time, you are limited to just the pages that are available there. So the uh, the about page or the home page, the chapter members page and those sub pages, the gallery page and the news page. Now, some people have done things like repurposed the gallery page in order to kind of have an extra page there, maybe turn it into more of a blog format or something like that. Uh, but you are limited to just these pages. But Thank you. Good question. Donna says, can I upload from my business personal YouTube? Yeah, I mean, you can use whatever YouTube you want. It doesn't matter what channel it's on. Um, it, as long as it's on YouTube and it's uh, it's able to be uh, shared, you can use the embed code to put that video in there. So it, it, you can even have it from mixed sources. You know, we're not referencing the page. We're referencing the video. All right, hopefully that helps. All right. Any other questions? Do we have any other questions at all? All right. If there's no additional questions, what I'm going to do is say thank you guys so, so much for being here today. I appreciate the time you took to invest more in helping your chapter out.
On that note, I'll say thank you and have a wonderful rest of the day and happy connecting.